by the Biden administration this week, offering a sober analysis of the impact of climate change to vital U.S. security interests at home and abroad. The administration says the reports will be critical to the ongoing work of U.S. intelligence, security, and defense agencies. And joining me now to talk more about this is the director of the Center for Climate and Security, Erin Sikorsky. She previously served in a senior role in the U.S. Intelligence Committee focused on these climate issues. Erin, uh, we're so thankful to have you and your expertise. Let's talk about this report that emphasizes not only the direct threats caused by climate change, but also how it intersects with these already existing threats. How does climate change exacerbate other issues the U.S. faces, like violent extremism, for instance? Sure. No, thank you so much for having me this morning. So what this report does is it shows that climate change, as you say, will shape the national security landscape for the United States for years to come. And as it puts strains on governments that are already stressed, right, because of the COVID pandemic, because of ongoing corruption, because of other issues, conflict, uh, climate's just another shock that then can provide violent extremists opportunities to take advantage of that government weakness. It can also provide U.S. adversaries and competitors opportunities on the world stage, and it will shape their behavior in a way that it's critical for our national security agencies to understand and plan for. Hmm. I wonder how this impacts our relationship with China. Obviously, there's fierce competition with China already. Uh, this report, though, details how uh, the situation with China is complicated because China could actually take advantage uh, of the issues uh, that uh, countries are dealing with as it relates uh, to climate change, even though they are the largest single source of global emissions. How do we deal uh, with China's role in all of this, and how can the U.S. alter its climate and foreign policy to stay on pace with China and actually counter that threat? Yeah, the, the first step is to make sure that when we're making uh, policy and thinking about competing with China, that we bring an understanding of climate change and climate vulnerabilities to that assessment and analysis. You can't separate the two, right? Mm. Sometimes you hear politicians say, well, is it climate or is it China that's the bigger threat? But that's the wrong question to ask. The right question is how do we think about how climate change shapes Chinese behavior, which the intelligence report and the defense report that were released on Thursday, they talk about. And they talk about going forward as we build U.S. strategy, the national defense strategy, other documents. We need to bring that, that climate lens to it because you won't get a, the right answers about Chinese behavior on the world stage. For example, if you don't understand the types of things these documents talk about, uh, access to rare earth minerals, how climate change will actually affect China itself, right? Mm. In terms of uh, sea level rise on the coast there, uh, desertification in the central parts and water issues there. So you need to understand that, otherwise you're gonna make wrong, wrong decisions and wrong choices. All right, we only have about 30 seconds here, Aaron, but. Uh, obviously, uh, the president uh, going into a, a, a very high stakes climate uh, summit here in the next couple of weeks. How important will those discussions be and should national security be part of those conversations? Those discussions are critical and national security has to be a part of it. Our research and these reports show that if we don't cut emissions in the second half of the century, the uh, climate impacts are catastrophic to security. So cutting emissions is absolutely critical and these documents help make the case. It's not just the scientists, it's also the security experts saying it's a real problem. All right, we'll see if uh, when President Biden goes there, if they've made any progress on Capitol Hill as it relates to the social safety net package and the climate provisions uh, provided in there. Aaron Sikorsky, thank you so much uh, for being here. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So Democrats say a new Texas congressional map approved by Republicans is aimed at diluting minority voting power and consolidating the power of white voters. It would have affected